Welcome to Crypto Land. I'm Krishna Undevolu. Today we're talking about how sex workers have turned to crypto after being cut off by banks, Visa, and MasterCard. Although most sex work is perfectly legal, some of the biggest financial institutions are wary of working with adult content creators thanks to outside pressure and a fear of facilitating things like trafficking. The logical solution? The sex industry is turning to crypto. Motherboard Sam Cole headed to Las Vegas to meet Ali Eve Knox, an adult content creator, to find out what life has been like with crypto after traditional payment systems cut her off. We can shoot one piece. We can use it for a whole bunch of different things. And like that's the only way we kind of survive is you have to like make your content work for all your different stuff. Would you do safer work and not safer work stuff? Yeah, yeah. And then would you make sure that you get uh, stuff for gifts? Yeah. yeah. Hope you like stinky feet, why? Yeah. Oh my God, I need lotion. I, I need a lotion it. boy. I'm gonna shake my ass if you get on here to shake my ass. It's, it's your yeah, NFT. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta get low to make my ass look big. They're shooting NFT content. And so it's non fungible tokens. So it's art that goes on the blockchain. Ali Eve Knox is a financial dominatrix and fetish performer. And for a little extra, she'll make you a custom video or send you a pair of her socks or panties. How often do you guys shoot this kind of content? I'm putting up um, an NFT probably once a week. And I usually make uh, money off of my giant ass. So particularly motion content with a big butt. Yeah. Some marketplaces don't allow nudity. So it's just another matter of time before I get kicked off those platforms too. You know that, that content will still be there because it's on the blockchain, like you can't get rid of it but I won't be able to use their platform anymore and I'll have to go to another platform or whatever. Non-fungible tokens are one-of-a-kind pieces of art, images, or videos. People buy them using Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency through the blockchain, a record-keeping system for the world's digital money. Like stocks, the value of crypto and NFTs fluctuate over time. But Knox's work hasn't always been bought or sold using crypto. In 2014, I had graduated from grad school and I was like super broke and really in debt. So I started camming and it was really nice because I like, I got to know like my own boundaries and I never had to do anything I didn't want to do and I could do it in my room and like for my house. And when I was done, I could just close the computer. So it was really great. So this is 2014 and almost immediately I got my PayPal shut down. Don't be walking in these. Where am I going to go? I'm just saying. It was like square, uh, circle. Snap Cash had wh whoever they had at the time, Venmo. I mean, you name it, it was like one after another. For someone who might not understand like what it means to be kicked off of like PayPal and Square and all these platforms, which like most of us use every day all the time, um, how does that kind of affect your life in a day-to-day -day way? I can't pay my photographers. I can't like go to the farmer's market and buy things. Banks won't give us mortgages because they're not gonna call our jobs legitimate despite the fact that we you know, pay taxes and we're reporting our income to all of these sites. Every single day, there's some other hoop that we're jumping through. Banks have always had a problem with sex work, not just the individual workers, but also the platforms that host them. The sex industry has suffered from years of discrimination by banks and lawmakers, spurred on by conservative groups who've been able to push through laws and regulations targeting sex work. You don't make a lot of money in porn. No. no. Okay. And you work your ass off. Yeah. You deal with a lot of, you you deal with a lot of shit. Over the past few years, creators like Knox jumped onto subscription sites like OnlyFans, where the platform took a cut, but the performers owned the work. Twisted on the innards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me wash my hands, because this is just a little too much. Seven years ago when I was shooting porn, I used to book this guy named Dean, like I would cast him, yeah. and he would book me, and now he shoots for us, for our OnlyFans. Like, he's our, our, our videographer. But it's so cool, because like I get to hire him now, and I get to hire him on my own terms. In the olden days, I was like, hey, will you please hire me, please? <laughs> now I'm like, come here and shoot me. But it's cool, because now I own that content, and I can monetize it over and over, and I'm not just getting my rate, you know what I mean? Plus, I'm doing everything, so it's like, yeah. it's my ideas, it's yeah. my, it's the whole fucking thing, yeah. 
But last summer, OnlyFans said it would ban all explicit content. The site made the announcement under pressure from banks and after conservative groups accused them of hosting child sexual abuse material. Days later, the platform reversed course. It changes the way that you think about things. In my head, OnlyFans goes down. Okay, am I going to have to start seeing people in person? Am I going to have to go back to shooting porn? So it's all these things where I'm like, am I going to have to be more unsafe just to pay my bills, just to have this livelihood? We're not going back and being teachers. I'm not going to go be a nurse. Like, this is it. This is what I'm doing forever and ever. I'm going to age out of this industry, so I better figure this out because that's how this industry works. All right, here's what I need you to do. What? I need you to squirt this on my ass. Okay. Okay. The only reason we were yeah. able to like survive any sort of like OnlyFans pullback yeah. is because we were had already stuff scheduled. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. now we're having to put our time into other platforms, you know? Yeah. Did you yeah. guys lose subscribers? Oh, oh my god. god. I'm down to 30% of my income. Just, like, subscribers. I love For nothing, and they won't come back. The guys won't come back because yeah. now they don't trust the right. site. Right, right, yeah. Right. So I took like a 50% income. Yeah. Oh, literally overnight. This type of financial instability is why she adopted crypto. I I started taking crypto at the end of 2014, probably. A cam member came into my room and he said, hey, download this Coinbase thing. I'm going to show you how to do it. So I held up my QR code up to the camera and he sent me Bitcoin through the camera. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, he can't cancel it. And I was having a problem at the time because I was like taking Skypes and people would cancel it or they would cancel my Amazon card or whatever they paid me. And so I was like doing all these Skypes and just getting scammed. And I was like, this. So I started taking Bitcoin and I couldn't take it back. And you could take it anywhere in the world. No one like knew who it was. It was great. So I started taking that in 2014. And then 2015, Coinbase shut my ass down. So I just started wallet hopping. So I've just been wallet hopping since then, trying to find a platform that lets me sell my socks. If people started taking crypto more and it doesn't become so regulatory, um, people can use it. It's built for us. Like, it's, it's just, it makes sense. It's low fees, it's no chargebacks, it's anonymous. Like, it's, hello, we're the best use case. She's now encouraging others to join her. For three months when I first started, I took two days off. One because I got held at gunpoint and one because I had the flu. My name is Belle Creed. Uh, you may also know me as Daddy Daycare. I'm a sex worker. I am a cam girl, a clip maker, a content seller, and pretty much anything you can think of. If you want it, I'll do it with some stipulations. <laughs> How'd you get into like sex work in general? I was working a million jobs going to college. Um, and my one of my friends at the time was like, hey, you should cam. And I was like, I, I, I grew up very religious. Um, so I didn't have access to the internet or anything. So I was like, what is camming? He's like, oh, I got a treat for you. All right. Well, it's not straight right here. But Are you I kidding? I, I, can do, I can do this. When I started, it was very ham- heavy camming, very heavy like Snapchat, all those types of things. Like OnlyFans wasn't a big thing. We were all like selling on clip sites and now it's changed and it's just become like a survival game. What got you into like crypto world? I'm friends with Allie. She was like, hey, will you, will you try this? I'll send you 50 bucks. And I was like, mm, all right, well, I'll try it. So I tried it and she sent me 50 bucks. And then like six months later, I looked at it. I had like $500 from that 50 and I was like, hold on a second now that's uh I like that so then I I got into it and I started you know using it as a payment method and then I recently did uh NFTs all right here we go bye an NFT can earn performers like Creed anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars worth of crypto hello friends come hang out with me marry you're not even gonna say please when someone asks me to marry them and they don't say please automatic no I just sold an NFT on Open Seas, so on secondary, someone just bought this, um, and you can see how much they paid for it and who it sold to down here. And we get all the royalties. From and we get the the royalties from it, so it sold eight minutes ago. So this is pretty great. I do. I did another oil because I do really well with oil. Like everyone likes my oil stuff. I'm hoping that they'll get super popular and I can sell more and more of them and sell them for even higher prices because it's a, a really nice source of income. These are my favorite socks. I have them in like 12 colors. And they're for sale. And they're for sale. Well, they're expensive because this is my favorite pair. The yellow is my favorite, so you can buy them, but they're very expensive. That's what it looks like when you buy it. It's just a little clip, a short GIF, and then you get the full 30-second GIF after. The exciting part is branching out to new things and like choosing new things to do, like the NFTs or 
you know, you start on cam and then you add making videos and then you add sex calls and then you add like humiliation videos or whatever. Knox and Creed are camming from the Las Vegas-based headquarters for Spank Chain, a cryptocurrency startup made for sex workers. It was all started by this guy. I think it'd be really funny to get a scene where it's like, uh, my is in the pumpkin, and then like... Oh, that way, yeah, that's what you, you're doing. You do the hand inside, and then like take off the top, you know? Spank Chain is the name of the company. The mission is to bring the benefits of uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain networks to the adult community. So merchants, you know, how you can go to a, a merchant site and check out and pay with it's like PayPal or Stripe or something, and it's basically the same type of thing, but for crypto. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this place. Like, what is Spank House? It's intended to be a place to hang out, to connect the two worlds that we sit in the middle of, the crypto world and the porn world, and for bringing people here to shoot porn, hang out in the pool, and you know, try to make it like more of a type of sanctuary. My whole, my whole vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest model category is probably fin doms. They really like getting tribute in crypto. It's irreversible. It's largely anonymous. So um, they're, they're big fans. I have given my wallet address to like my regulars or people that know me, they can find it on my website. And like, um, I want somebody to pay for my dinner. So I just tweet out, who's buying me dinner? And within two minutes today, I received a payment. So I get my little email that says you received a payment. And they're paying you in Bitcoin. Um, he's paying me in Bitcoin, yes. So it's pretty cool because I can see the transaction ID. I can see like how much it was, how much it came to me, how he paid it. So that's great. He's, he's a very good boy. He's my best boy. Yeah, he's a sweetie. After finding new platforms and going all in on crypto, Knox is still a target. She's under investigation by the IRS, but has no idea why. So they sit me down and they give me the quiz about every single thing. They want to know how many socks I have sold off of my wish list. They want to know where my crypto is, what exchanges I have it in, where, where I've run money from, where I've gotten it from. Every single piece of information you could possibly imagine for two hours. So I'm just sitting at the table being like, this is what you assholes have decided to do with your time and your resources, is to come harass a small-time whore in the suburbs. Sex work is always on the forefront of technology. These workers experience both the benefits and the dangers of innovation before anyone else. So I think people listening to this are maybe thinking, well, if you were just selling socks, that's legal, so what's the problem? Why are the feds coming after her? We can be fucked at any reason, for any reason, and often are, and will be. There's a couple of my friends now that have been investigated, and the Ali's case was, was weird because the agents said they like saw her do an interview, and they like started paying attention to her from that. And so Ali's just very brave to continue doing interviews, uh, even though she knows the feds are watching. Ali is used to this kind of scrutiny. Sex workers will make a platform popular while also bracing for the day it's taken from them. I hope that I can stick it out. I don't know. I know there's a lot of people still in crypto that are against the horse. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can stay. From Spank Chain to Cum Rocket, sex workers and adult content creators are innovating on the blockchain. But this tech pioneering is a product of necessity and has thrown sex workers into the wild world of cryptocurrency startups and investing. Here to get into it are Motherboard Sam Cole and writer and sex worker Liara Rue. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. The first thing I want to get through is just like kind of a values conversation. Like I think when people think about sex work or adult content, there can be a moralistic layer on top of that. And what's cool is that like the idealism of an enlightened sex work and the idealism of a crypto blockchain world both kind of disrupt those problematic power structures. Yeah, I think uh, the sex work community and the cryptocurrency community have a lot in common. Uh, it's two groups that are looking for ways to disrupt, like you said, those power structures. Uh, it's people who are rejecting the way that things have always been. 
you know, platforms like OnlyFans, um, you know, my free cams, things like that, where people are owning their work um, and creating something for themselves. There's a lot less separation between different types of sex workers. You okay. know, there used to be strippers, porn stars, cam girls, and escorts, and dominatrixes. Now, people really run in a bunch of different circles, you know. A lot of escorts have started OnlyFans, so they're doing porn now. A lot of cam girls will see clients in person. It's this really cool blurring of the lines, uh, and it's brought a lot of different communities together, which has made sex workers as a whole a lot more powerful yeah. as a block. Wow, I mean, yeah. that is just so many options in the hands of the creator. Yeah. But then the issue is payment. Right? Absolutely. So take me through the, those problems. Because like, yes, there is now this sprawling network of ways that content creators and escorts can do business, market themselves, make money. But then the actual handing of cash back and forth has this intermediary from credit card companies to a PayPal, through an OnlyFans, et cetera. So take me through that. What have been the e recent problems? Because what I, I mean, I remember hearing about OnlyFans no longer supporting adult content creators. And I was like, Okay, so who's left? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a very good question. And that's all, from what I understand, like, because credit card companies don't want to get mired in, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, payment processors being hostile toward sex workers is a problem that's been going on since, you know, almost the beginning of the internet, which, ironically, sex workers, you know, were the first ones to adopt a lot of these platforms, like PayPal and, like, the online payment systems. A lot of them were built to facilitate selling porn. But yeah, like you said, in recent history, it's gotten so much more worse. It feels like the walls are closing in for a lot of people where all of these platforms have these terms of service that say you, you can't say all these specific words that might be construed as people meeting up. And this is all coming from pressure from organizations and payment processors who are afraid of this moral panic, specifically about sex trafficking. A lot of it is really baseless. Uh, banks don't want to be seen as being high risk. That's a category that porn is high risk because it has this stigma attached to it. We saw Visa and MasterCard and I think Discover drop Pornhub in late 2020 and they stopped payments through them completely uh, after you know these big exposés came out where they were saying you know Pornhub has got all of this child porn on it, which is you know not true. <laughs> yeah. And those payment processors haven't come back to Pornhub even though the platform revamped oh, wow. uh, its entire safety and security systems. Just to bring us up to recent days, like OnlyFans kind of had the same thing happen where they were saying, you know, we're gonna get rid of all not safe for work stuff because the pressure just got to be too much from banks. And there was a big outcry on Twitter and elsewhere, there were protests. And then about four or five days later, OnlyFans was like, oh, actually we figured it out. Everyone come back. <laughs> yeah. But by then it was like the damage is done. Yeah, yeah the, they really broke their trust with the sex working community after they did that. Um, and I think they may very well have been told by their banks that they had to do this. I think, you know, maybe the banks saw that the tide is turning a little bit. I think all of the media coverage that the sex workers' rights movement got after the OnlyFans ban happened. It was, it was huge. It was a lot of people that were talking about sex work that I had never seen talk about it before. Yeah. A lot of like, it wasn't just like crypto guys. <laughs> it was, you know, it was finance reporters. It, yeah. was, you know, it was covered everywhere in a lot of places that maybe had not engaged with sex work in a meaningful, critical way before. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool to see that. What are the rules that credit card companies put out there that you have to kind of navigate through if you're, if you're gonna go that route and accept that kind of payment? As an escort, I accepted credit card payments and I basically just lied to them about what I did. Mm -hmm. I created a shell business and had my lawyer write a fake contract for the client to sign that made it seem like I was in an entirely different industry. When I started accepting payments for porn, I launched my own porn site. And so I set up credit card processing for that. And with that, they knew what I did because they were able to see my site. And the credit card processor that I was working with, CC Bill, they charge 15 to 11% just for the credit card processing. Uh, Which is more than an average retail sale. Absolutely. But they really hold your hand through everything. The credit card companies have extremely vague policies that they refuse to clarify. Uh, but CC Bill has been working directly with them for so long that they're able to really 
give you specifics. I remember I was on the phone with one of their representatives. They were giving an example of a prior porn shoot that someone had run past them. And this girl wanted to be naked riding a horse while peeing. <laughs> and she was like, can I do that? And they were like, no, you definitely can't. And she's like, well, can I be just naked on the horse? They're like, no, that's bestiality. And she was like, okay, well, can I be naked beside the horse and peeing? They're like, yeah, that's totally fine. <laughs> so it was just like, they have these really, I don't know how they do it exactly. I guess they just have some guru over there that's just like knows what the credit card companies are gonna freak out over, but that's how they've been able to help porn companies uh, process payments for years. Right. And a lot of this happens through the platforms themselves. So you can get kicked off of a platform for breaking their rules because they're trying to keep their rules in line with the banking institution's rules. There was a whole thing where like OnlyFans was like, you can't shoot outdoor porn. Um, and then it was like, oh no, you can shoot outdoor, but you can't shoot it on private land. And then it was like, no, you can't shoot it on state parks. No, you can't shoot it. And it was like, it was all these like, these really little picky things. And then you, you try to contact their support and they're like telling everyone something different. And they're just trying to stay uh, in good graces with the payment processors. Crypto poses the possibility of like, hey, you know, it's private, which mm. like I think a lot of people value in this space. Somewhat uh, private. <laughs> Semi-private. Right? It's, you know, irrevocable or immutable mm. and ever, like you can't pretend a it's a hundred dollar bill, but it's actually a twenty dollar bill, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, talk to me about the promise, like from your experience. I started accepting it for payments a couple years into doing sex work. It was something I preferred in some ways because there was no possibility of chargebacks, unlike with uh, credit cards and Unlike cash, you could accept it in advance, so. Oh, um, that's interesting. Yeah, it was this sort of happy spot between the two payment options where I could get paid before a booking so I didn't have to worry about whether the person actually had money or not. And I also didn't have to worry about them potentially clawing it back, which unfortunately both are things you need to work, worry about as sex workers. Which is to say like, I'm gonna pay with your credit card, but then after the encounter, I call my credit card company and say like, actually that wasn't me or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> thankfully that That's, never happened to me, but a lot of my friends experienced I can that. see that as a like playbook page one for the douchebag though. Yep. Like, oh yeah, and the credit card company always believes the customer. Yeah. Always. Mm-hmm. I think Ethereum is really going to actually be something that a lot of sex yeah. workers end up using just because of the functionality. But there's a lot of cool... What do you mean by that? I, I don't know what that means. Ethereum adds a lot of functionality, like the ability to do layer two transactions where you give a very small amount of like a secondary coin and ah. then like once an hour or something, um, it syncs back up with Ethereum and processes all of those so that everyone gets paid out or charged accordingly. Uh -huh. And that to me is the most exciting. Oh, that is interesting because that kind of takes the processing part away from a credit card company or a Coinbase or like a, a third party thing. Exactly. And it, it puts so it in the coin chain, itself. And so having these open source protocols that allow people to interface with Ethereum means that you can't ban sex workers as sort of like a core integral part of the functionality. Mm -hmm. And that to me gives sex workers a lot of leverage and power in this situation. It'll be interesting to see what crypto technology truly survives and becomes dominant. There's this really cool creative power that comes with decentralization, but at the same time, that opens the door to everything that people don't like, like child pornography. Do we want to facilitate the purchasing of child pornography with cryptocurrency? It's happening, you know? And I think that's something that the crypto community is going to start reckoning with, and that will obviously have an effect on the relationship with sex work. Yeah, well, thank you for, that's the elephant in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin and other, other cryptos could be used for shit that is bad, right? Mm -hmm. Child pornography. How much does that, like, let's separate the wheat from the chaff here. Like, how much does that actually happen in relation to, like, what we would say, a moralistically speaking, is consent-based materials? Oh, I mean, uh, the consensual material that's online is, I would say, it's, you know, it's, the majority. it's overwhelmingly the majority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, uh, sex workers are, are working yeah. very closely mm -hmm. to get that solved. Because that's the weapon that people use against sex workers to get it wiped off the internet. 
people say I think that also a lot of sex workers are just disgusted by it. I mean, I remember there was this one cam girl a few years ago who filmed a video of her masturbating in front of a child's playground. And obviously that's inappropriate. Sex workers were the ones who were leading the charge, reporting her to the site, telling people about it, trying to get it taken down. Let's get then to some of the more creative or hard to understand arenas in the intersection intersection of crypto and sex work. I'm talking about like cum, cummies, <laughs> which in the platform is called cum rocket. That's yes. what it was. And then there's like big boob coin, like basically like for us, by us coin. The, the entire thing makes about as much sense to me as, I don't know how it works, basically. Is it Kohl's cash, basically? Like, you just, <laughs> you're just like paying kind of. with the money created by the business? Yeah. So what is something like Come Rocket or Cummies? Obviously, we'll have to see how they pan out, but the emails that I've gotten from these startups and similar ones do feel vaguely like a pyramid scheme. Okay. Um, I mean, a <laughs> lot of direct, crypto yeah. is like that. Yeah. Um, they offer you a bunch of the coin up front. They're like, you can have it. Um, it'll go up in value if you start using it and get other creators to join. And of course, you know, you can say the same thing about USD. USD is sort of a pyramid scam. Stocks are kind of a pyramid scam. It's like, but the difference is with boob coin, there's no inherent value backing it. The US government is pretty good at paying their debt. Um, boob coin, you know, it's a little more of a question mark area. Who knows? You know, there have been a lot of coins that have been started outside of the sex work industry where people raise a bunch of capital, millions of dollars even, and then disappear. There's this tension between the world of crypto and the world of sex work where Crypto is very male-dominated. They're nerds, you know? I, I am a nerd myself, you know? I love them to death. Um, but when it comes to talking to hot girls, there's often a disconnect in uh, the ways they communicate. I think once a week I get an email in my inbox asking me to sign on to some new crypto startup for sex workers. They're like, we're gonna make NFTs for sex workers. It's gonna be great, you're gonna make so much money. And then I check out their site and I'm like, this is barely working. You know, a lot of the people who are doing a lot of the best work in the scene, they don't necessarily know how to engage with sex workers, how to make them feel safe and comfortable. So the industry itself has a lot of growing up to do, um, and that's a problem. It's, it's a major problem to kind of get the eyes on your product, but also be taken seriously as something that you can trust with your money. So yeah, I think it's definitely, it's to be seen how some of these shake out. Maybe we'll see a lot of name changes as they get older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope that there are many crypto sex work companies that are really successful because it's better for everyone if there's a vibrant ecosystem. I don't want there to be just one company that yeah. is that successful that the point, and does really well. <laughs> yeah. It's fine if there are multiple and maybe some of them are cringy, but some people really like them. And then there's others that are more cool that other people like. You know, there's there's got to be something for everyone. Uh, you know, yeah, I hope, I hope the sexual liberation is upon us and that crypto helps. Yeah, same. Yeah, I think we could all use a little sexual liberation these days. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys again for joining me and talking through all this stuff. And thank you at home for joining us too. That's it for us today, and we'll see you next time.